How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project. Now if this is your first time here, my wife and I live off grid in the Arizona desert. We're building our own sustainable earth bag home. Now we are starting to get deep into June. June is usually one of our hottest, driest months out here in Southeast Arizona. And today was a scorcher. I think it hit 104 today. Now as hot as that is, the next couple of days are just gonna get hotter close to 110 degrees. Ah, it's definitely gonna be hot. And we're gonna take you around and show you how we're trying to beat the heat on our little homestead over here. Everything from our solar, to our car, to our trailer, to our Akita, who definitely doesn't like the heat, and our chickens. They're not so crazy about the heat either. Come along. Good morning. When it gets hot like this in the summer, now is the time to get things done out here because now it's nice and cool, probably around 70 degrees right now. When we go back to work in the house, this is the time we'll be uh, busting it out up there early in the morning, later in the evening. But right now I'm gonna let the chickens out of the coop. It's morning. Uh, Chaska's probably ready to get out there. I know that for sure. All right, the coop's open. We'll let the chickens do their thing. I guess they're uh, sleeping in today. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna talk about the solar here in a little bit. But first things first, I wanna open up the door to the solar shed. Talk a little bit about why I wanna open that in the morning here in a little bit. Who, you ready for your walk? You ready for your walk? Of course, another big task for the day is getting this guy a walk in the morning. <laughs> I try to give crew a little bit of a longer walk in the morning and maybe a longer walk in the evening. It's so hot during these days, especially for him because he's an Akita, he's got a double coat. He's really meant for those colder mountain temperatures. But uh, here he is, Southeast Arizona. Uh, he's, he's just gotta make it through the, uh, the summer and then uh, he can enjoy the winter again. But now that the sun is peeking up over the mountains, it's gonna get hot here real quick. So let's go back over by the shed and I'll tell you what's going on with that. So welcome to the solar shed. Now this is the second build we did out here. Kind of experimental. It's done with a fiber adobe technique, which is basically mud mixed with shredded paper. So this build, kind of experimental, not without its problems. But it's probably got six inches worth of earthen walls. So six inches of earthen walls is probably not enough to get a good thermal mass going. It'll maybe keep it a little bit cooler, a little bit longer during the day. And at night, it definitely extends that heat of the day into the night. So that's why I try to leave this door open uh, a little bit longer during the evening to let some more of that cool air in. And I open it up right away in the morning to get more of that cool air in and just get some of that heat out. It's a basically just a kind of a stick frame structure filled with the fiber adobe. And as far as the roof goes, just a simple metal roof that's been framed under there. I put in some plastic bottles to try and utilize as insulation. I don't think any of this works very well because it was never finished. It's just one of those projects that kind of got away from us. So this doesn't heat up like the shipping container. The shipping container will just uh, accrue a massive amounts of heat and get unbearable. This in here will get slightly above the ambient temperature. So let's say it's 100 degrees outside. It might hit 101, 102, which is not too bad but we're housing the solar equipment in here. For the past two summers, this equipment shuts down in June. I think what's been happening is that it gets a little too hot in there for the equipment. We gotta keep crew cool, we gotta keep Jess cool, so the air conditioner comes on, these things start going into overtime, plus it's getting hot in there, so all that leads it to shut down, and it shuts down usually two times in June. And eventually, I think once it cools down, it resets and it starts working, it works fine the rest of the year. So I'm gonna see if some of these techniques that I'm trying will actually keep the inverters from shutting down and keep them running, keep them cool all throughout June. So let's take you in there, let's show you what I'm working with. So just a really quick overview of our solar system. We're running 15, 320 watt panels. We got a charge controller, four Tesla Model S batteries, hooked up to a little combiner box, 
going to two inverters that are hooked up in parallel, which goes into another combiner box, which feeds into our main electrical panel. Not the biggest system, but pretty efficient, and it gives us more than what we need for sure. So we have a little window in there. I keep that open, and I keep this door open pretty much all day. So my idea is just to kind of keep the airflow going through there. When those inverters kick on, they have little fans in there to kind of keep things cool, but those inverters get pretty hot because it's kicking out a lot of heat. It's working on overtime to try and run that air conditioner. So I got a little fan pointed at the inverters, hopefully to carry some of that heat away. I've also added in here a little wireless thermostat. The sensor is in the shed over there. The main reading panel is in the RV. So I can kind of keep checking to see what the temperature is in there and just kind of monitor the situation. And that's been a really nice tool to have as well. In the coolest part of the morning, it got to 70 degrees inside the shed, but it's gonna heat up and it's gonna heat up quick. I'll take you along as things heat up and we'll kind of keep an eye on that together. It's approaching 9 a.m. and the temperature is already at 88 degrees. Let's go see what the temperature is inside the RV and inside the shed. So this first thermostat is the temperature inside the trailer. 82 degrees. Not too bad considering that it's really warming up outside. The second one over here is for the shed. Again, 82 degrees. So you can see how the shed kind of compares to the ambient temperature right now, to the temperature in the RV. Pretty similar. Uh, of course, there's humanure over here, always trying to stay cool. Of course, he always is cool. On days where it gets so hot like this, I like to work under the shade of the rain roof we have over here. One of the last preparatory things I'm gonna do before I hang these gutters is just clean them off a little bit. They got a little dirty, kind of laying on the ground, kind of cleaned off some of the caulk on there. So I'm just gonna give them a wipe down, then they'll be ready to hang. Waste not, want not. <laughs> In the tree get some water. Now that it's at about 90 degrees, you can see the fan has come on. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised Jess was able to wait this long to turn the fan on. It's getting toasty in here. Crew appreciates the fan. Let's see water on the ground for Oh, they like to scratch at it. I think it kind of helps them cool off a little. sand in my eye. <laughs> Had a huge dust storm roll through, eh? Yeah. Or a uh, dust devil. That thing was big. Looked like a mini tornado. Is that Cheska's friend? I think it is. Oh, that's too good of <laughs> So it's about quarter to 10 in the a.m. It is now 91 degrees outside. Woo! And you can see the air conditioning is on. So it's 91 degrees outside, 87 here in the RV, and 88 in the shed. Let's take a look at the shed and see what's going on there. So you can see now that the AC is on inside the RV, the inverter's kicked into high gear and it's really working to keep up with that energy usage. This thing can pull and run just a little over 3,000 watts. That's why we have the two inverters tied together because between the two, we should be able to run between six and 7,000 watts continuously. Of course, the RV can only handle about 3,000 watts because it's about a 30 amp service. So right now it's 88 degrees in here. If you touch it right now, it's not too warm, but it's probably just kicked on. So we'll check it later. And by the way, I'm down to my last gutter. Last one to clean up, might be the dirtiest. I was kind of afraid to get in there and clean these gutters because they looked so messy, but uh, it's not too bad and they're almost done. So you can hear the inverter still working hard in here. Now it is 97 degrees outside, 95 inside. So right now the shed is staying a couple of degrees below the ambient temperature, which is good, but it's getting close to 100 degrees so I'm going to set this fan up and uh, just keep the heat from building up on the inverters. So you can see I just keep this fan pointed directly at the inverters. That way it can just keep pushing that heat off it 
and uh, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it and we'll see how well it does. Hopefully the system doesn't kick off. Water in the chickens, water in the plants. Yeah, I gotta keep everything alive. Keeping it's yourself, hot. keeping yourself watered? Yes. The flies are trying to get inside where it's cool. Nasty. Tell me all that strawberry goodness is for the chickens. And all of it. Oh! Another thing I do for the chickens sometimes to help them cool down is just give them some frozen fruit. <laughs> give them some frozen fruit? I share frozen fruit with them. Are you enjoying it just as much as they are? <laughs> so it is hot out here. It's probably 106 degrees outside. It's 107 in the shed. Now with the kind of heat that we're having out here, air conditioning could be important. It might not be necessary, but it could be important. And I've been having issues with the AC in our car. It only blows when the car is moving. Also, I have to literally turn the fan dial all the way up to really get the AC to blow. So I'm going to pick up a couple of parts I ordered at the auto parts store and see if I can't work on the AC system and get it to work a little better. That'll definitely help if we have to uh, utilize the car in this, uh, in this heat. Alright, we are back from our little trip. It's 108 degrees now in the shed. The air is back on so the inverters kicked on in the high gear and we'll just see if it holds. So this last trip into town was just absolutely brutal. The AC in this car is getting way worse. So one, I picked up a cabin air filter. Not that it's necessary, but I haven't changed it in a while. And as long as I gotta go in there and change out the blower motor, I might as well change out the air cabin air filter as well. Well, I guess this filter did need changing. It is pretty filthy. And I got the blower motor right here. Bam. So I'm going to give this a shot. Never done anything like this before, but why not? It didn't look too difficult. And everything's right here behind the glove compartment. <laughs> All right. I got the glove compartment out. Hopefully I can finish this, <laughs> finish this up. I have no idea what I'm doing. Thanks for the licks. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing? What are you doing? You can't go in there. Come on. Ooh, ah. oh, the flies out here are disgusting. Got the old motor out. Got the new oh, geez, got the new motor plugged in. Just gotta get it back up into place now. Get everything screwed in. Oh. It's as if this job wasn't bad enough with all the flies out of here. Moment of truth, let's see if this thing uh, starts blowing. Sometimes you just gotta take the plunge, get a little bit done yourself. Now I don't know if this will fix the AC issue, but I think it'll definitely help. It's feeling pretty good, a lot stronger than the other one. So it should be interesting to see uh, how this works and if I need to keep the car moving in order to get cold air into the car. So wish us luck. So now that I got that motor replaced, it's about 6.30 in the evening now. The temps are starting to come down. The highest temperature in this shed was 108. It's now 107 in there, so I think the worst of it is over. We're still running the AC in the RV, so the uh, inverter's really still working. So I'm just gonna keep the fan on it until things cool down and make sure we don't have any trouble with these inverters. But so far, so good. Because hopefully these things don't kick out this year. That would be nice. 
All right, y'all, so we survived the first day of this heat wave, but today is even hotter than yesterday. I think if we keep up the same techniques, hopefully we can avoid a shutdown of our solar system. Cross your fingers, but I think this might work. Eventually we'll get this uh, shed beefed up a little bit and keep it a little cool in there for temps like these. For right now, we're just trying to do the best we can. Doing the best we can with what we have. I think it's time to start using the summer kitchen. Uh, we have this old motor home. Uh, I have a crock pot in there and a toaster oven. So during the summer, we usually try to do the cooking in there because we don't care if that gets hot. We want to keep it cooler in the RV that we're living in. So I'm going to try to make some meals that don't require using the stovetop as much. Maybe use the crock pot more and Probably going to be eating more salads and kind of cooler things too. So today is definitely a scorcher and definitely hotter than it was yesterday. It is 102 outside right now, just a little afternoon. Temperature in here is 103. So I'm just hoping everything holds out. I'm hoping this fan does its job and we just got to make it through today. <laughs> just a quick update on the car. The blower motor replacement seems to have really done a great job. We got in there this morning and the AC was blowing nice and cold, but it still has a little bit of an issue because when it idles for too long, the AC cuts out. I shut everything down, started the car, and when I turned the AC on, it was still in idle and then it shut the engine down. So there's definitely another issue there, but I think I got part of it solved. So I'm gonna have to do some more research and uh, figure out if I can get that last little piece in place. Official, it is 106 out here, and inside that shed is 110 degrees. Let's go check it out. Just open this fan and this door, just keep things just cool enough to keep things running. Well, the inverter doesn't feel any hotter than it did before. Just hoping this all holds out. It still has a couple more hours before things start to cool down, so I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what is that? Frozen bone broth? I froze some bone broth. That. A little icy treat for crew. Y'all, I kid you not, it is 111 in that shed. And this is the most we've ever done to try and kind of keep things cool. So I'd hate to see what it was like on those previous summers. It's kind of no wonder why things kind of shut down. Still keeping my fingers crossed. What I'm really worried about is crew. It's like 95 inside the RV right now. Anything above 90 really doesn't tolerate too well. So yeah, we got the fan going, we got the AC going, but that's about the most we can do for them. Uh, we do have a cooling vest. I don't know if we'll be using that or not. So crew just has a little bit more time, maybe a couple hours before things start cooling off. Uh, this past weekend was brutal, wasn't it? The heat was intense. This uh, upcoming week is probably going to be similar temperatures, a little bit cooler, but uh, we're going to have probably mid 100s uh, all throughout the week. Uh, but I'm, I'm stoked. I was kind of able to kind of monitor and keep the shed probably a little bit cooler than the past couple of years. I mean, like I said, the past couple of years, I've had this, these inverters shut down on me twice and I wasn't quite sure of the reason, but now I know the reason. Like it's probably just gets way too hot in there if there's no airflow. Maybe for next summer, we can do a little remodeling of the shed. It's uh, poorly designed for a number of reasons. Yeah, there's some things, uh, changes I'd like to make. I think we can make them pretty easily. Maybe make some changes to it, make it a little better for that equipment that's in there. You know, part of what this lifestyle is, it's uh, kind of making do with what you have, trying to do the best you can. We're lucky we have the beefy solar setup that we do. It uh, kept us pretty cool for pretty much most of the day. So it's all about uh, those simple techniques you can do to kind of try and keep our, ourselves cool, keep crew cool. And the chickens are doing well. So it's just all these little techniques you can do to just keep things a little cooler uh, during these intense summer days. Well, I'm looking forward to getting moved into the house because I feel like that's gonna be a lot 
cooler during the summer. Once this house is done, it's gonna be a lot better than these uh, RVs, I'll tell you that much. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so, so much stuff is coming up. Uh, I'll be working on the gutters pretty soon. I'll be getting our rainwater harvesting set up in place. Of course, I still need to brace up these eaves. I'm gonna be doing that, and then we'll be getting these bags protected. We kinda of got blasted with this heat wave, so we had to take care of a bunch of things. <laughs> heat wave! Stay cool, everyone. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye.